Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about how to make an acute angle jig for your miter saw. Sharp, sharp angles like that. There are many times that I find myself needing to cut trim or molding at an angle way sharper, way greater than my miter saw is designed for. And most miter saws, they'll cut you to 45 or 55 degrees. But you know, out in the field, you might run into situations where maybe rake trim um, molding runs down and dies into Greek Revival cornice returns, or in a house trimming where base cap and uh, transitions at stairways. So the scenario is this, what do you do if you need a 60 degree or greater cut? Well, you make an acute angle jig and it can be done in 20 minutes here in the shop or on the feet in the field. The goal is to make an auxiliary fence that can be clamped or screwed to your miter saw so that when you have your saw set at zero, you're now at 45 degrees. And I'll explain that a little bit. I've made several of these jigs over the years and I've learned that each miter saw has different dimensions, different fences, and lots of quirks. So if you make one of these for your saw, you're gonna have to make sure your saw is with you when you do it, and you're gonna have to make it fit your saw. But the general idea here works. Also, when doing this, try to think about how you will clamp your jig to your saw as well as clamp the material to your jig. I use two different jigs. One is for small, thinner moldings like casings, uh, base caps, band moldings, things like that. And then there's another larger that I use for large crown moldings and larger moldings, cutting crown nested and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you both. The first jig is one that spans both sides, the whole length of the saw, and allows you to change left or right angles without moving the acute angle jig. You first start with the jig base and fence. So I use scrap birch plywood for my jig because it's durable and it's, it's, it's stable. Um, I hold the jig base plate on the saw and I adjust the saw depth, the depth of cut to that jig and I cut about a half inch into it. I don't wanna cut all the way through. And if you forget to do this like I've done in the past, you'll cut through your fence, you don't wanna do that. I initially started with a nine and three quarter inch deep base because it was great. It allowed me to clamp all kinds of stuff on the outer edge. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to see my miter scale, so I ended up cutting two inches off. Later, it occurred to me that, wow, wait a minute, maybe I'll just add the angles to the edge of the jig, on the edge of the plywood, so I could see it. So, in hindsight, had I thought of that, I would have left a larger base, because I really like that clamping ability. Um, all right, number two, the next step is to determine the height of your fence, the back fence. Initially, um, I made my jig fence the same height as my aluminum fence, which is like four and a quarter inches, but the saw had hit, so I had to cut a half inch off of clearance. So you'll have to tweak that. The third step is to add the angle guides. Now, I add a second layer of three quarter inch plywood to the bottom, that jig base bottom. Um, when I do that, I make reference marks for setting the fence on the saw as well, so it can be clamped in place and I can align it quickly every time. Here is where you can geek out. So if you wanna make the fence longer or you know, um, make maybe cleats on the back so it slides or locks into your, your aluminum fence or have a better index for it, great. You can also use thicker wood um, so you can get a deeper, larger angle guide. It's up to you. With the fence clamped now to the saw, I mark the maximum swing, the maximum reach that the saw blade will come out at 45 in both directions. This is gonna help you later when you're um, gluing and screwing, so you don't wanna put glue or screw anywhere in between those maximum swings. The next step is to cut out the angle guide. So you're gonna set the saw to 45, both directions, and you're gonna cut through that sub base. That's gonna result in a 90 degree um, uh, wedge, three quarter inch deep wedge that you take out, and that's gonna be your new angle guides on either side of your angle fences. Now. When you use the fence, you're just gonna align a piece along the edge, and I usually back it off just a little bit from the rear fence so you don't catch anything during the cut. Um, I also clamp my pieces down when I'm cutting for safety, it's just smart. And when cutting, it's a really good idea to let the saw blade stop before you lift the blade. I, I violate this rule sometimes, but it's a, it's a good idea to do that. Also, when cutting super sharp angles, like 75 degrees or more, Depending on the width of your molding, you might not have enough clearance for, your, for um, a clamp with the saw coming back that tight. So in these situations, what I do is I use a couple of brad nails and I shoot it through my molding into the fence. Don't ever try to freehand that. That's a circus cut. Um, all right, look, let's talk about these greater than 45 degree cuts, understanding the jig angles. And I, 
And this can sometimes get a little bit confusing. So when the saw is set, normally at zero, straight ahead at us, right? The jig will be cutting at 45 degrees because you have these 45 angle cuts. If you swing your blade five degrees in either direction, you will now produce a 50 degree angle cut. Five more degrees will be 55 degrees. Five more after that will be 60 degrees and so on and so forth. So the jig puts the zero at 45 now for you. Now for larger moldings, crown moldings, um, I use an acute angle uh, jig with a much taller fence allowing me to cut up to like four inch crown nested. And you can make them bigger if you need to. This jig is usually, for me, I make it, because it's big, I make it to set on one side of the saw and I can switch it pretty easily. To make this jig, I start with some scrap plywood, 12 inch by 12 inch, that's my base. And then I install a 45 degree fence across that with two supports. The end result is that I connect the supports and it makes a triangle for the jig. And this design is durable and it can get tossed around the shop or my trailer with little worry. After building this jig though, guys, I think my rear support is probably too tall. I had trouble getting my hand in there with a clamp. I either need to use a C-clamp instead or maybe cut that down. Look, sometimes the simplest jigs can be the most used and handiest things. And I think that these acute angle jigs for the miter saw might just fit that bill. Well, that's it guys. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. Please consider supporting the channel by joining as a channel member. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time here at Concord Carpenter. Please stay healthy, stay well.